Hi everyone. So you know, recently I've been picking up a lot of hunky dory stuff. <laughs> um, really pretty stuff. Mostly paper products. They do have stamps and dyes and things like that, but like their papers are really great. The moonstone dyes are really lovely too, and I actually want to get to working with some of those. I had some in the past, but I've been picking up a few more of those more recently too, um, so we'll try those out very soon. Uh, if I have any links in the description box for any of the items that I'll be using, those will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you're purchased I am still those links. I generally don't link to Hunky Dory, it's um, hunkydorycrafts.co.uk. I don't have an affiliate relationship with them, but you can find them there if you want to look at what they have in their own shop, right? But generally I do crafts.hsn, places like that. Um, so this is a Mattastic Blush Moments, and I just want to use this because it's pink, it's fresh it's so pretty again these are in a pad like this they also sell things exactly the same but just in a plastic bag like that bag I just took off of there which is recyclable um, it would just be loose papers so they have these pads where it's all together which is really nice because you can just kind of flip through and see what you want to do I definitely want to make like a stepper type card today because we've been having fun making steppers and Hunky Dory always does something different it seems like when they do their cards now having said that I do want to see if I have something in here that will work for that Actually, I think a lot of things would even work. Maybe even this would work. Let me see. I was thinking about making a 5x7 and then making it so it has steps on both sides. Something a little bit different. But let's see how wide like this one is. Oh, this might work. It's a little bit smaller than 4 inches. Actually, this, is, this might be the one. I, I wasn't really sure what I want to use in the center part of it if I'm going to make 5x7. But either way, it seems like a lot of these will work. Um, even like this inside one here or however. Okay, so uh, those are the toppers or the pop top type things where you just basically pop them out. They're just held on by little little chads or whatever you want to call them. They're right there, here and there. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty in the matastic. So a lot of times their papers are a little shinier. You know, um, I don't like too shiny paper, but I don't mind like that satin look of their papers. So I like that. But this matastic is really pretty. Again, these are 350 GSM, I think. These feel a little bit lighter, but yes, yeah, it's 350, I guess, just because of the different feel. The other one's more coated, right? Um, foil, butterflies, and, like, this one has the border at the bottom with those beautiful, beautiful, like, what is that, cabbage rose type thing. I always say the wrong thing, and then I'm like, oh, well, it's a peony or whatever it might be, or, like, some other kind of rose, but really pretty. It's that kind of just like a bulb like this. Um, and here we have these pretty roses again. Blush moments premature roses and stuff like that. I think this is the one I would want to use, but then we're going to have to cut some of it off, and I know that breaks our heart, but... Oh, maybe this one. Oh, wow. Because the stepper, you know, generally we do like an inch, and I would probably use it this way. You know, five by seven, because it'll be five inches, and then cut. Huh. got to cut this off. It's just going to be in the back. Oh, this paper's so pretty, you guys. My goodness. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, well this one has little flowers, and then this one has like the foil on this side. Um, or maybe even these papers. Oh, I forgot, they have, usually it has plenty of this kind of paper. So then we have this one here, and it has the corner pieces, so you can cut your paper down. You can just fold it in half if whatever it is that you want to do for your card. This one has the perfume bottle down there, and has this corner piece. A lot of times they cut the corner piece away and then bring it down closer to the actual project. Whatever is, this one with the beautiful actual roses there, and then a little like water marbling. And then this one... Has that little bird down in the corner. Um, I know it looks upside down because I guess I should be holding it this way, shouldn't I? <sighs> Sorry, guys. And then these are the inserts. So again, thinner weight paper just to insert in your card or put it on the back of your card or wherever it is that you need to put it so you can actually write on it. And just the very soft hues of the same papers, it looks like. Um, this one's a little bit different. But just in soft tones. And plenty of them. So let me think about which of these papers I want to use for what we're going to do and then get to making some measurements for that. And I'll be right back. Okay. So let's just scrap a piece of paper. You know me. So if we're going to have 5 by 7 that means our paper is actually 10 inches tall, right, by 7 inches wide. And I want to have the steppers on both sides. So if we do 1 inch on both sides, we have 5 inches to work with. But that's going to leave little little side steppers. So I think what we can do is one and a half inches. So one and a half, oops, what am I writing? Let's say one and a half, one and a half. And that takes away three inches already, so at least four inches in the center, right? So four inches. So one and a half, four inches, one and a half for the steps. And then of course this is scored at five inches because 
that's just how that is. <laughs> uh, in half, so it'll be five by seven, oriented like a landscape. And I usually do one inch increments, you know, the first step and then all that. So let's just think about what we want to do. So if we do one inch up, one inch down, because as much as you go up, you go down. That's already two inches, and then one and a half. Okay, let's do that. So this is kind of like whenever I do a five by seven type stepper. So let's say we're going to cut, you cut from here to here, so that's a cut line. That is going to be one and a half inches in on either side, right? The cut line is going to be in one and a half inches, one and a half inches. And the first score line will be at one inch, and then the second one will be at two inches. And then the third one, okay, sorry, so two, that means five, one and a half, three and a half, at three and a half. 3.5, just because it's easier to write that. The 5 inch one's already there. So when we came up 1.5 inches from the 2 inches, we go back down 1.5 inches, and that adds up to 5. All these things add up to 5. The 5 inch is already scored for us because that's the middle of our card. And then from there, you want to go, go down, and you can go down the same. You can actually add up all these things to add up so it works out. If you want to just keep stepping all the way to the back, you know what I'm saying? Let's say one inch up, one, one inch down, one inch up, one, just to have some fun. But um, I like to just make it look a little more tiered, and I leave it at that. So this score line will be at seven and a half. So the same thing over here. Seven and a half, the three and a half, the two, and the one. Now I did say that I would be... Um, choosing my papers for that. This is like breaking my heart having to cut this paper because even if it was A2 or a 12 inch or whatever, well, you know, A2, this is A4, we need the width to be the 7 inch width, right? And then we're going to cut the height at 10 inches so that we can score it. Um, so, I mean, unless you want the stepper, actually, <laughs> that would be kind of interesting if the stepper had different colors on both sides like this. But really, it should be something... See, this paper, I think, it's too busy already, isn't it? Let me think. If I had this paper and I had it like this and I cut into it, you're not going to see the roses that much anymore on either side. But I don't think that's the biggest deal. This one might be the one I want to use the most. And I'll just tell you why, because I don't mind cutting off this back part. I feel like if I cut any of the other ones, it's just going to break my heart. Like if I had cut this one 7 inches wide, that's fine. But then we have to cut it at 10 up this way. So then I just have this little strip that I can't really do anything with. But it's pretty. But I guess you can use it as a strip somewhere else. It would look really nice though because the front of the stepper would be just this whole solid bar. And then it starts going up and down right after the 1 inch. So it's pretty in its own right with that. Now let me think. If I had this one, it has this area. I'd probably use this one just because, like I said, I feel like this one makes more sense for what I want to do today. And having taken that out, the pad is separate now anyway. Okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to trim this 7 by 10. I'm going to take the 7 inch side this way, so that way I keep the flowers the most. I mean, you can cut off the flowers if you want, whatever it is you like. I'll probably cut off this side. Well, you know what? I kind of like that this is here. Let's see, we're only taking an inch and a quarter off. Yeah, I'll leave the flowers, that's fine. So I'm going to take this off and then cut it at 10 inches high, okay? So I will ooh, be right back. So 7 inches, 10 okay. inches. So I have these two pieces. Again, you know, we can use these for something else. Um, but I'd rather do that with this card than what I was thinking before, so that's fine. A lot of this is going to be covered up anyway because we're going to put a topper on it and all that, so... Okay, so I always like to do my halfway mark, and I'm just going to use my paper trimmer for all of this, but if you want to bring out a, you know, your scoreboard, go for it. Um, this one I'm just going to put here, and I'm going to line it up to 5 inches. Don't cut. And I'm just going to grab any scoring tool I have that fits in here nicely. And right down at 5 inches. This is a little bit harder to do on this because this paper is really thick, but there's our 5 inch score, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts. So when I cut, I'm going to cut an inch and a half in, uh, starting at 1 inch all the way up to 7 and a half. So I'm going to put this on here, an inch and a half in, so an inch and a half, and I'm just going to you know, use the lines on my board to really help me keep that straight. And we're going to start an inch in, so, you know, 
this is counting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so whatever trimmer you have, pay attention to those numbers. So that means I'm going to start at 9, so I'm just going to lay this up at 9. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know it's way at, well, down here. 9 inches with my little pointers right there at 1 inch, and I'm going to bring it all the way up so I end at 2.5, which is literally 7.5. It's just that it's 2.5 inches from the end, right? So from 1 inch, I'm going to go all the way up to 2.5. So when I get closer there, I just kind of slow down and make sure I'm right at two and a half. I like to make my cuts. If you want to do that as a score line and then cut it, go for it. Now I'm just going to turn this this way, or you can push it all the way over here, I guess. Yeah, I'll do that instead, just so it makes it a little bit easier. And we want to go an inch and a half in, and again, this is seven inches wide, so we're going to go to five and a half. So at five and a half, I've lined up my edge of my paper at five and a half. We're also going to cut, again, we're already at two and a half, it's there because I had just finished there, so I'm going to push this down and I'm going to bring it all the way down to nine inches. Basically one inch from the bottom of our card. Okay, so it looks something like this. We have that score at five inches. A cut one and a half inches in from one inch all the way up to seven and a half inches or two and a half inches from the top. A cut again at one inch all the way up to seven and a half or two and a half inches from the top. So now we're going to turn our card this way. Sorry, or so I'm going to well. continue doing the score lines here on this, but you can definitely bring this to your scoreboard at this point. You're just going to have to do your lines this way. And when you go to turn it this way, you're just going to do opposite. So we're going to start at two and a half, right, to make this two and a half one. And then you already have the five inch, and then from there you got to go an inch and a half, an inch and a half, and then one inch. Now on this side, we're going to go one inch, you know, an inch from there, so two inches three and a half like we said five is already scored and then seven and a half so excuse me so if you want to do that on your scoreboard you can I'm just trying to debate what I want to do eh. okay we'll just actually guys I'm so sorry for all the pauses like if it's not one thing it's another <laughs> my neighbors I don't know someone's car alarm was going off and they're like oh that's fine like how I don't know and there it goes again I don't even know if you can hear it, but you know I'm just gonna talk through it so on this side again this is the longer side so this is gonna be a seven and a half inch score but since I'm here I'm putting it at two and a half inches so I line this up at seven and a half inches and I'm just gonna put this score line just right there and I'm gonna turn I instead of coming over here I mean I guess I could well you know what if it's lined up perfectly I guess we could come down here and score this at the same time right just from the bottom up that saves time that works I haven't really done a double stepper like this so we already have the five inch score right from before so the five inches is already there and if you didn't have it which you should you would score it now at five inches all the way across right all the way down so five inches and this is a line up at five inches now I'm gonna line this up at three and a half again however you want to do this we need to score it at three and a half here just to the cut line, okay? I didn't, if I didn't mention that, we're going right to the cut line and then from here up to the cut line. So like I said, if it's not one thing, it's another. My neighbor's now calling for his dog. <laughs> A different neighbor I can hear out there. What is going on? All right, so now I'm going to lift this up. Oop. And then we're going to go to two inches, right? So that was our other mark. Two inches. So top down right here. Two inches right to that cut line. Again, I do it a few times because this paper is really nice and thick. And I am scoring this on the nice side of the paper. Um, this is just regular matastic, you know, just like any other cardstock. If you want to, if you're using like the nice shiny kind of stuff that they normally do, you can turn your paper over and score on the back just to get nicer scoring without like pushing on your paper. Um, and then one inch. So I'm just going to bring this up over here. Now this one will be the trickiest one just because you have to line it up and hopefully it doesn't move on you, but that's okay. You know, just give this little lip here. But I do like that this has a nice lip here. Hunky Dory also has a trimmer that um, extends over here like an inch and a half. It looks a little bit bigger, which is really nice because it gives you that space on this other side. You know, just do what you need to do. Okay, so there's that. And then this one at one inch also. Okay. So, this is what we have. I know I didn't make a mock-up because I hardly do that, but I did it one time. Sorry, I just want to talk seven. about what we have here and make it nice and clear. So we have a seven by 10 piece of paper. It's scored at five inches. And then I like to do my cut lines first. If you want to make these score lines and then cut them, that's fine. But a half inch and one and a half inches in, starting at one inch up, you're going to cut or score to seven and a half and then cut it, however you want to do that. Same thing on this side, one and a half inches in, starting at one inch all the way up to seven and a half. And then we're scoring one inch, two inch, 
three and a half, the five is already there, and seven and a half. Same thing on this other side. Okay, well now that my neighbors have thoroughly worked my last nerves. All right, here we go. So we're just going to fold back and forward. So I always like to kind of start with this one as you're pushing, and especially when you're doing a double, because obviously we're, we have to mine both sides instead of just one separate side. But as this one's coming up, <laughs> we're pushing this one back, right at that same mid-center. And that kind of lets this guy go up too. So as we're kind of closing that up, kind of getting this going. And then, you know, you're up and you're down. <laughs> right? And we're up at the very one inch. So that first one inch, I'm kind of doing this with both hands, but you don't have to. I mean, you can kind of crunch it up. I was already kind of getting it that way as I was working. So this other side, same thing. Just, and I'll show you what that looks like so you're not confused. But basically, you're just going back and up, or what's the word? Mountain valleys. I just don't think of things that way, to be honest. <laughs> I think when I was little, I used to do origami. That would even confuse me. I'm like, what do they? What do they mean? So I'd rather pay attention to like the little arrows that they would draw. And here we go. Now we're gonna give a squish. So before I get really squishy, I want to show you what I mean by is mountain fold. So it's up, right? Valley down, and then up again and down so that's what it's gonna look like but basically where you're starting you're just pushing it away from you and then up and back you know just keep going so until you're done so I am going to bring this down again just carefully and since this is handmade you know it's not gonna be super perfect because it's obviously our score lines and everything else but it's gonna be pretty good so I'm just gonna hold this down here what I mean by that is like you can well, maybe you can't see it but I can see this is kinda sticking out a little further than I would want but as you're um, doing this and kind of burnishing, you can kind of manipulate that if it's really off, right? For me, that's not too bad. But if it's really off, just kind of like try to pull it up this way or whatever it is that you need to happen to make it a little straighter as you're kind of burnishing. And that is a double stepper 5x7 card. Still 7, still 5 here. Obviously, it's not in these areas. Now, it's already pretty because it has a little prettiness to it, right? This little border. We have this. And then our beautiful flower here. So what I'm going to do is go through my um, stack here. The toppers. I mean, look at this. You just pop this on here. It looks gorgeous. That would look gorgeous. They all fit there, or they can stick out the top if you wanted, however you want to do it. Um, I was kind of wanting to do this one, even if it sticks out off the top. Let's see. Let's pop this one out. Oh, you know what? It seems like with these metastic ones, it's a little easier to pop these guys out. I was going to keep this all at one piece, but maybe I'm not. Huh. Like I said, a lot of this is going to be covered up anyway. Unless we take away this part. Now, I feel taking away this part is kind of odd, because when am I going to use it again? So a lot of times with Hunky Dory, they'll do this, and then they'll take away this middle frame and then not put it back. But it is kind of a different shape. Maybe I won't be able to use it again. But they do do a lot of arch shapes too, so maybe this piece, like if I don't use it today. I might be able to get away with using it with this one down here later. You know what I'm saying? Maybe put this on some acetate or something and then put this or whatever I want to do with that. So we'll see. But for now... Sorry guys. Yeah, and that kind of makes it so you can see a little bit of this background flower, even though we're going to basically cover up the whole thing. <laughs> but there it is. I think that might be what we do. Or do we do with the smaller one and not use this one? Hmm, that's interesting. But now I feel like the image is dwarfed by the card. But maybe if we have that in the background, this pops up in the front. And then we still add a bunch of other pretty things. Huh. That's so hard. Isn't yeah, let's go with this one, even though it's covering up a lot. Okay, let me clean up a little bit, and then we'll do, like, everything else that we need to get to. Yeah, okay, let me put some of this stuff away, and we'll start building so this up. just looking at this, and actually, instead of lining it up down here and just having kind of a weird gap up there, I think I'm going to bring this up even higher, and then have this here. So, let's see. Yeah, that'll be good. Uh, I need a little glue. Little dabble do ya. And we're gonna glue that down first, and then I'll put some dimensionals on the back of this, and then we'll use all kinds of little fun things that are on this paper pack to kind of fill out some of the other areas. Again, with a stepper, you can put things on each step. You can just not do that, <laughs> whatever you wanna do. I am gonna glue this pretty well, though, because it is gonna be hanging up on its own. 
a lot of times, like I said, with hunky dory, what they like to do is like put an acetate behind a frame like this, and that acetate gives it sturdiness. But look at that, that's like the exact right size, uh, left and right. Um, okay, so I'm gonna let that sit and really stay down right there. I'll get some dimensionals on the back of this, okay? And I'll be right back. Okay, guys, and I just eyeballed these, and <laughs> that was pretty good because I'm like right at the edge because basically it's gonna go in here. So I got it right on there. And then again, we have lots of fun topper pieces. We have like those little border strips. I mean, if you want to add that too, but the reason I picked this paper is that it has its own colorway kind of down here or whatever it's going on. And hopefully that's straight enough. Look at those beautiful flowers. I mean, so pretty. So again, what do you want to do? Uh, we have just for you a little perfume bottle. We have, I mean, even, I mean, even popping this other one back on here. This is one thing I will say for me showing you guys. It's hard to have this on a pot. On a, on a package like this but you know we have happy birthday you can pop it right in there love and hugs you know just for you the little perfume bottle oh my gosh oh my gosh there's so much cute stuff on here I pretty much have to use a few things so like maybe you're the best can be on here and then we have these that are both tags but you don't have to pop out that little center hole you know what I'm saying like this is a tag but if you want to and maybe add a little organza or something Oh, I'm dropping things. Hold on, let's get this on here. And then you see there's still another topper, another topper, more stuff, more words, and then of course everything mixes and matches in this kit, so even if I wanted to go in here and get something else, you know, thank you for being so lovely, it'll work, because it all coordinates. Even though they do have kind of their own style, like each little topper sheet, but they coordinate, so. Let's see. That's it. Those are really pretty. Ugh. I don't want to... <laughs> gouge these. So if I put that back there, maybe, or maybe up here on this one back there. Huh, that's funny, because I mean you can put them wherever you like, of course. I feel like back here they're both kind of hidden, so maybe this one here, just for you. Oh, but then let's do just for you here, <laughs> this one over here, and that way when we put in the you're the best here, we only we already have words with each other, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, let me think of, let me look and see if I have any kind of organza or ribbon that I would like to put in there, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have this very thin, pink, sweet pink ribbon from Tonic. I'm a little scared, because if I do this, we're going to have to go with it. Or, hmm, maybe we just make like a little bow and stick it on there, and not actually put it in here like a tag. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Like if I made like a little finger bow, let's say, so just like a small one. So starting here, go over behind your index finger, in front of and behind your middle finger, and then we're just going to move it over. And if I make a couple of those, that way we have the texture, but we don't have like the, just in case our bow doesn't come out real nice, or the knot, or whatever it is that you're going to have there. Let me adjust this a little bit, bring it this way. Okay. So that guy goes over everything, and when it comes out here, you're going to shove it under and pull it through and I used way too long uh, an end <laughs> that's okay and then before you really tighten it up real tight if you want to adjust this because maybe it's a little bit too big or whatever just give it a little pull here a little pull there you can just mess with the these guys oh look at that so cute I know I have the all kinds of bow makers and of course I just end up using my fingers most of the time okay What if we stuck those on instead of a whole thing? I think that's what I'll do. So I'll make another one. Um, I'll just fire up my hot glue gun. And these guys, you just kind of, I try to make them look nicer, you know, work with them a little bit. I'm not going to finish this off until I make my second one so I know that they're about the same size. I'll make a second one and I'll be right back. Second one, it's about right. So I'm just going to cut this. Now, if you think this card's going to get a lot of wear and tear, I always like to frin fringe. <laughs> singe the edges uh, or the ends of my little bows oh that did not look good with um, a little flame and actually I don't know where I think I lit a candle that is so my little flame is somewhere else but just real quickly and when it's like polyester or that kind of material if it's uh, cotton don't do it because it'll just burn and then this little guy and I'm just putting them kind of at an angle oh that one was much shorter than the other guy 
And I think it was from this side, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is glue these down in just a moment when my hot glue gun is ready. And I'll be right back. Okay. So, just something a little bit different. But of course you can always tie the little guys in there. Ugh. That glue. Alright. Cute. Of course you want this a certain way. You can always manipulate like your ends or whatever it is. So I'm going to hold that down and I'll do the same thing for the second one, okay? And if there's any of those little like tick, little things that hold them on, little chads, uh, you can just cut them down if you would like. So we have those and then we have the You're the Best. So I said I was going to stick this over here and since my hot glue gun is on, I might as well use that. And I'm just going to place it over here, sorry. I'll show it to you in just a second here. Just here. Have it down the center. So cute. And do the same thing for the one in the back, but I'll put it in the back. <laughs> and we're almost done, guys. I do think it's fun. I was saying the Hunky Dory, it's like they make three cards in one card. They're always like topper and topper and topper. Lots of sentiments <laughs> or words. I already put um, dimension adhesive on the back of this one. Actually, I shouldn't have taken those off until I decided where I was going to put this. Ooh. Maybe we do put that there. And then we need two dimensionals on this one to clear the where it came from. Plus another little piece of height to keep it up. You know what I'm saying? So it has to be kind of like here. Yeah, that works. So there's that. And then there's this. And then I just got these, so I'm going to try these guys out. I need to turn this guy off. But I was wondering which of these colors I should use. This is the pinks and purples. There is pink and purple in this pair back. I don't know if you can see like that purplish color. So I was thinking maybe the purple, it's more like this tone, would be nice. Something like that. Hmm. And then how many are where? Let me see. Maybe just a little something on either corner. I don't know. Um, I still like this mid size one so you see it. Just there. And over here. Oh, and it goes back to the sparkles that are kind of going through this marble look. Alright guys, well that is my card for today. Again, a 5x7. Now, I put this on top on purpose, so obviously it makes it much bigger than 7. Uh, I'm sorry, than uh, 5 in that direction. It's probably closer to 7. You know, it looks like 6.5. But there it is, a double stepper. Hopefully that made sense for you guys, and you can try it out. And I will see you guys at the next one. <laughs> Bye now.